She mounted and rode off. It grew awfully empty without her. Yeah, so that does mean that she went through the blockade. Okay. Redanian armies blocked the Pontar crossing, yet you sent Ciri to Novigrad. She was looking for a sorceress, and all of them are in Novigrad. Besides, I didn't leave her at the Redanian's mercy. I gave her a letter of safe conduct. Who was the letter to? No one. It was like this one. Show that to those pricks at the crossing, and they'll let you pass. This for me? See no reason to make things harder for you? You seek your child, this letter will help. Where do you get them, though? Are they forgeries? Or you as the self-imposed leader of Velen? Is that authority enough? Where do you get these letters? I haven't always led this pack of jesters. <laughs> Served in the Temerian army once. Redanians guard the crossing. True. But with a bit of fame and a friend here and there, well, banners and heraldry don't mean so much. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun playing as Siri. It does feel really different, and it's cool having that dynamic between Geralt kind of playing Chase, and then every once in a while, also seeing what's happening on Siri's end, too. So there's a chance Siri's still in Novigrad. Thanks for helping her. It's nothing. Now you've learned what you wanted to know, you must be in a hurry. But, if you could... Spit it out. I want to go get Anna. Free her. Bring her back. I don't believe she's there willingly. Must have not heard me. Any journey into the swamp is suicide. I heard you. Which is why I could use your aid. I've no more tales of Siri to offer you. But go with me and I'll be generous with what I do have. Very generous. Okay. I think we would like to. I mean, it's uh, an additional quest for us to do. I do suspect that this is probably going to be... Uh, it might be too difficult for us to do right away. I'm not sure. Hmm. Extra we'll coin never hurt. Ha! True indeed. I'll round up my men and ride to Down Warren. You can join us there. Fine. Sounds good. Oh! Huh? <laughs> Huh? Care to explain? What was that? You tell me. Man or monster? My men call him Uma and say he's a beast. But he seems a man to me. Just hideous as Arnold shit. So... But like... I don't Ooh. care so much about his strange name. Name. Aye, strange. But he gave us no other. You mean he can talk? Hardly. It was like this. I asked what they called him. He sat there, not saying a thing, trying to stick a toe up his nose. So I grabbed <laughs> his hand, looked him in the eyes, and asked, What's your name? Gave me this damn foolish look and stammered. Ooh. Uma? And it stuck. Alright. But yeah, more importantly, what is the deal? Hmm. Why Doesn't is he here? Like a monster, but my medallion's trembling. Strange. Where'd you find him? Funny story, actually. I won him in a game of cards. Hmm. Nothing better to play for? That's harsh. Must have been pretty desperate to play for that. Ah, quit your carping, smart ass. Someone wagered him and we played. If anyone was desperate, it was the bugger's former master. Hmm. Funny story. How so? Went to Novigrad once to rest, indulge in the city's pleasures. Stayed at a tavern and some folk they were playing, so I joined in. Cards were kind that day. Had one devilish hand after another. Robbed the horsons blind. One fellow, the merchants, took it especially hard. 
He'd gambled away everything he'd brought from Skellige. Wanted terribly to play another hand, so I agreed. Asked him what he had to wager, and he showed me that sideshow. Not much in it for me, but fuck it, I thought. I'll give the man a chance to win something back. Luck was not with him. And Uma wound up here at Crow's Perch. End of story. Hmm. Bad. Nothing particularly comical, other than just a series of unfortunate events for that other guy. And it's odd that you now have a person or monster or whatever the case is for Uma. Proper Baron now. Even got a jester. Aye. Now I feel something's not right with him. How so? Well, he seems more beast than man. But there's wisdom and cunning in the bastard's eyes. Or maybe I'm imagining it. Never run into anything like him. No, but he doesn't look dangerous. Hmm. I guess that's that. Doesn't eat much, so as long as he's no trouble, the boys might as well have some diversion. Time I was on my way. So long. Farewell. I hope you find your daughter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Same to you. And prove a good father to her. That's... The... Not sure if that was genuine, or if that was meant to be backhanded. It's definitely day now. It's a little bit of experience. Achievement unlocked. Return to Crookback Bog. I am curious what level that quest is. I'm also curious if we see any update on the other quest from the Peller. Okay, so it seems Novigrad. Is it Triss in her house? What? Seems like Novigrad is the place where Siri went next, but didn't hear any mention of Triss specifically. Siri's trail took Geralt to Novigrad. However, I suppose we did hear that. She was looking for a sorceress of some sort, and the Baron was saying that that's Novgrad is the place to go for that. I mean, Triss certainly is a sorceress, but it would seem just one of many. The serious trail took Geralt to Novigrad, the largest city in the north. It would take seas of ink to describe the city accurately, so suffice to, suffice to say, uh, it is the seat of the Church of the Eternal Fire, a bustling port city, and a haven for artists, and all sorts of other shady characters. Yet Novigrad at this time was not the city Geralt knew from his earlier travels. War ravaged throughout the known world, and rich cities often proved tempting morsels to armies on the march. It was clear at this time that this particular morsel had both Radovid and Emir greedily licking their chops. Within the city, the temple guard acted with impunity under the command of a Ankarus snot named Caleb Menge, and with the support that of that terror spreading band of zealots, the witch hunters witch hunters. Meanwhile, the kingpins of the city's underworld still held much of it in their sleazy grasp. Finding Siri here would be like searching for a needle in a burning haystack. Harold would clearly need some assistance. Luckily, an old acquaintance of his lived in Novigrad. Her name was Triss Marigold. We've not really, we definitely haven't seen, nor have we heard much about Triss yet in The Witcher 3. Obviously, lots and lots with Triss in Witcher 1 and 2. So I was interested to see when and where she would come back into the fold. Obviously, it was going to happen at some point, right? But in Novigrad, okay? And I'm trying to think, Witcher 1? She lived in... Vizima, right? Vizima is basically no more at this point, and chapter, or Witcher 2, we were on the move for basically the whole time, so I'm not really sure we necessarily saw where she took residence, but now it's Novigrad. Okay, oh, and the other one was a secondary quest, I assume, from the Peller. Okay, Return to Crookback Bog is only level 9. It's a little bit surprising. 
And then Forefather's Eve is only seven. And it seems that that one might be the most time sensitive. I thought that there was a chance we were going to fail it, given how long it took for us to finish those conversations with the Baron. So I think we actually do this next. And we now have access to several quests that are... They are still below our level, but they're only a little bit below our level. Forefather's Eve a little bit less the case there. But it does seem like we probably want to do these next. These three side quests. And we do have the chance of playing the Baron at Quent, or at least did. I don't know where he necessarily ran off to. Somewhere. And now that we maybe kind of sort of have a little bit of time, I suppose we could see if there's anyone else to speak to in this general area. Been to the garden many a time before. I don't really feel the need to loot those herbs once more. I won't tempt fate. Given what happened in the past. Oh, okay. This is new, actually. I don't think we had access to the benches earlier, or if we did, it was only very recently. Really? <laughs> okay. Quartermaster. Oh. Fancy a gander at our little stockpile. We've gathered ourselves quite the collection. Why let such nice things waste away in peasant haunts? Okay. Seems like it could be both an opportunity to that? buy and sell some good things and potentially play some Gwent. Nilf Guardian Armor. Huh. Fire's level 10. It is, and that's not an issue. We're above level 10 at this stage. More notably, has 10 more armor than our current pair. However, our current pair of armor has 0% durability, so that might actually be better than this one. One that we would be buying here if we were to repair it. The boots, though, are also not looking great, the ones that we currently have. But those aren't fully beaten up just yet, so that might still be worth repairing, and our trousers are looking great. Fairly decent at this stage. So much so that there's not a huge difference between our trousers and these trousers here in terms of how powerful they seem to be. As for the gloves, hmm, depends. We have some sign intensity on our gloves that we would not get from these here. Ooh, some Gwent cards though. Decoy oh, is fantastic. If we get another of those, that would be nice. This looks like a treasure hunt map of some sort. Yeah, let's take that. That sounds good. This card, Nausicaa, Cavalry Rider, it's a Nilf Guardian unit. Still don't think we have enough cards to do a Nilf Guardian deck. Well, oh, well, we do have one of these already, but let's take this. Oh, and there's one more here as well. I almost didn't see this. Cynthia, <laughs> Nilf Guardian Empire, ranged, four strength, only ten coins to, to purchase it. Sure. Nilf Guardian saddlebags, yeah. It looks like they've basically just acquired a bunch of Nilf Guardian goods. I would have to double check. I suspect this is probably better than our current horse gear. But I would want to just cross-reference that. It's, what, 70? Additional maximum weight. Can we see our own stuff? We can see the stuff that is not currently equipped. Okay. Yeah. That might be worth picking up at some point. We should also, like, probably sell some things, given how this person has 600 coins. We should probably take advantage of that. And we don't want to sell any of the gold or silver stuff. That's probably better to break down into components. Incense? I don't know about that. But we once again have at least a little bit in the way of hides. 
Inkwell. I don't think we've ever seen that before. But unfortunately, I think since we sold a fair bit earlier, oh, this is worth something. Not necessarily sure that we have much to give to this guy. So I don't think we're going to be able to take too much advantage of how many coins this guy has and therefore how much stuff we could sell to him. So be it. Any of these other leathers? Any good? The wool fight a little bit. And I'm assuming that it is technically not preferable to sell any of our weapons or armor to him on the assumption that we will not get the premium price because he's not a specialist. Let's just sell a bunch of our waters because we do have a lot of those. And other than that, maybe bread as well. It's extremely cheap, but it's not really, not really doing anything for us basically no purpose to doing that. They don't have weight. They don't have any or have very little value when we try to sell them. They do have some value as food. Maybe not a ton, but some. Alright, and we could Gwent. Let's give it a shot. Wouldn't mind a few rounds of Gwent. It's been a long time, actually, since we last did Gwent. And as I was saying before, I'm not sure which units, or which factions, rather, we have enough cards to play as. Looks like for Scoia'tael here, we're getting close. We just dump everything in here. Do we reach the 22 number of unit cards number that we need to get to? I kinda doubt it. Plenty of special cards. But not units. Yeah, so no Scoyatel yet. Northern Realms, I think, is the answer. Remains the answer, really. And I do think we want to get in another decoy, because that is really strong. However, we are at the maximum number of special cards. I think what would we dump in that case? Let's see. Whether this is special. What would we like to get rid of? We have two Torrential Rains, two Biting Frosts, and two Clear Weathers. I feel like that's a lot of weather effects. So let's maybe remove one of these. Maybe in one of these as well. And then if we look at all of our cards here. It should free up space to put in the decoy. And then... Is there anything else we'd like to put in our deck? I think we do still have enough cards to play at this stage, so if we feel like all these cards here are worse than the ones that we currently have in our deck, then probably just leave it as is. I'm pretty sure we have enough Commander's Horns we're not allowed to put in any more. Oh, or maybe we are. Okay, that is a good card, so sure. Other than that, I think our best cards remaining are four power units, which is not a ton. I think five and better is sort of the cutoff. So let's let's go with this then. Fingers crossed that we get some good stuff here. Uh, and that we did not. <laughs> um, Gun Banner Medic is very good. Allows us to play an additional card, basically. One from our discard pile. These guys work very well together because they get a bonus when that happens. They have double strength in that case. Same here. So that's actually a couple of good combos there. This is solid at five. And then these guys increase the strength of our siege units. However, we currently have no siege units. So that's not terribly relevant. So I think we swap these guys out and, well, we got a very strong siege unit. Probably still... Better to re-roll this guy, though, because at best he's given one additional strength to one unit. So he's, what, one power plus one additional power that he's giving to someone else. So on net, two. That's still horrendous. And we got, what, in return? Siegfried, I think? 
We got a five. Not bad. All right, that is a terrible card. Is it not? It can get doubled in strength if you have another one, but double strength for a one power card is basically nothing. So, do we counter with a little bit of melee of our own? I feel like we could do that. Maybe that's overkill at this stage, though. I think we try to play it simple. Try to ease out a win here. Okay, you're playing another five yourself. We can do that, too. Want to be a little wary about investing super heavily in one row, because that does leave us susceptible to getting weather affected. We don't have a way to remove that if that does come to pass. Okay, however, if you're doing it too, then suddenly it's not as daunting of a task. Now remind me, with this card, choose one card from your discard pile and play it instantly. It, no heroes or special cards, okay. But it can be a unit from any row. It's not like it has to be Siege because you're a Siege unit yourself. So I was basically wondering, can we play this unit now? Or do we need to... Or rather, I guess, is this the only unit that you can bring back from our graveyard, or can we take anything? It seems like we can take anything. This... This nerfs the range row. You do currently have a 5 strength unit in the range row. We do not have anything in the range row, so this might actually be a good way for us to take a bit of a lead here. And then if we need to invest further, then you'd like to just ease a little bit further into this round and not commit heavily and throwing down an 8 strength unit would be committing pretty heavily. But I'm hoping that our opponent passes after this. They do not, though. Oh, they play a spy. That's interesting. That means that we are more powerful, but they've had the opportunity to draw additional cards. So I think in that case, what we do here is we have a 7 strength lead at the moment. So let's pass. And if they really want to win this round, then it's probably going to take them a couple cards to make that happen. So that probably means that two cards that they drew from this, it basically cancels those out. So I think this is fairly safe to pass at this point. We could potentially invest a little bit further and then we'd be pretty certain. So let's give this a shot. Oh, I'm like, I think I'm holding the, the Y button, but I'm looking at the bottom right corner to see the circle fill, and it's actually in the left side where that's happening. Okay, so that's a concern. Yes, you did have a 8 strength unit, so you could win a round in one turn. So that's definitely not what we wanted to happen. That was the risk we ran. So you do still have a card advantage, and you did still win the first round, and you can bring back that card. You should bring back the one that you just, yes, went through all that trouble to play. So maybe that was reason enough for us to feel like we could have played this guy. Could have done basically what our opponent just did. Play a really strong card and bring it back for the next round. However, I was kind of thinking that we could hopefully pick up a round one victory. And maybe our opponent still has a little bit of a card advantage on us. But then we give them round two where they have to, like, basically we play nothing. They play a card in round two. And in doing so, we get back the card advantage that they had. Even things up a bit from that standpoint. And then we can still bring back the strong unit in round three. Or we could have gone for the win in, in round two as well. And see if we can make that work. Okay. But this is now going to be very tough. We're going to have to rely pretty heavily on these double strength units, I think. So let's start with the melee ones, I think, because they're a little bit weaker. So we'll see if we have to go all in or not. Does that guy have anything special about him other than the one strength? Nope. So it's just all in all a horrendous card. Nice. There's the double. Does put us in the lead. And our opponent does pass. So that's actually fantastic. Because we have played one fewer card than our opponent this turn. Or this round, I should say. So our opponent did have a one or two card advantage going into this round. We will... 
gain one on them, or at least get a little bit closer from having played one fewer cards this round. And also, we draw a card when we win a round, so that should even the playing field entirely. Okay, so I'm liking what I see here. So we can play this unit and bring back something from our graveyard. Probably going to end up being either Vess or Siegfried because we did not end up playing our strongest unit last turn. Didn't really need to. So I think that makes sense for these guys. And then we have our hero ability, which will double the strength in the siege row. So that means that we will double the strength of you and you. And then we do also have the commander's horn here where we can double the strength of a row of our choosing, in which case it'll probably be the range row for these guys, because these guys are going to be pretty darn strong, unless our opponent nerfs them. And then that also gives us the ability to nerf the melee row. We're not going to have much in the melee row, unless we opt to choose, bring back one of these melee people. It's probably going to end up happening, because basically everyone is a melee person. Um, we opt to do that with the medic. Let's start with these guys, though. Alright, Kira Metz is theoretically an even Stevens play there. Five strength for five strength. However, we can double that now. Whereas Kira does not have the ability to double. And that is a very weak card. Jumping. Okay, so that's good. Then. I mean, we're gonna end up playing everything, right? So. This is the last round, so we'll play this. And somewhat interesting to consider playing a spy and then drawing the two cards. How do we how confident do we feel that we will get more than four uh value out of that? I mean it should be well over four, because we are not only looking to balance that out, we're also looking to benefit from it on net. So really we're looking for probably more like mm, nine strength across two cards that way that would mean that on net we're gaining five which would be the equivalent of choosing either Siegfried or Vess. I'm feeling like we can take that chance. Okay for a second there I thought we weren't going to get the chance to draw a card and I was like uh that's not what I signed up for. We definitely did not want to get Torrential Rain because that nerfs Siege and we're about to invest in some Siege. But we did also get a Siege unit with 6 strength that ultimately will get doubled with our leader ability. So on net, that is 12. So that is, yeah, actually more than what we asked for. So that looks good. And also, remember, we're, we're actually giving our, our enemy a spying unit, but it's in the melee row, which is significant because we're about to nerf the melee row. So even though it starts off with 4 strength, it's going to go down to 1. So we'll, our target was actually a little bit lower than, than getting a, a 9 strength swing. We definitely surpassed it in that case. So let's go for... I guess we'll go in the melee row now. Again, I mean... Theoretically, you could maybe make a case that there would have been a reason to do things in a certain order in rounds 1 or rounds 2 to try to trick our opponent into thinking we might not play quite as many cards or play cards in a slightly different order, but at this stage, round three, you're going to end up playing everything anyway. And also, we're playing a CPU, so you never really know what they're going to do. So now we either double this row or we double this row. Let's use our hero ability, because I feel like we might forget it otherwise. Let's do that. Okay, you're clearing weather effects before we've used any weather effects, which is good because now I'm going to apply a weather effect. Let's use the Biting Frost now to nerf melee. It's not going to affect us, it is going to affect our opponent. Then next turn, okay, our opponent is fast. We'll buff the range row because we can. 
And there we have it. That should be pretty significant win there. 78 to 10. Nice. All right, so we got some crowns from it. Yes. And I don't recognize the name of that card. Uh, I feel like it. The text was greenish, so I'm not sure. That might mean that it is Foyatel. Yeah, was this one zero? Zero strength. Use one card, for, but it's a medic. That's interesting. Wow. So it has no power in and of itself, but it can bring someone back from your graveyard probably means that it is still roughly equivalent of the strength of your average card, or at least in some cases your best card, the best card that you've played thus far. So maybe that still pays off, but it does certainly feel like that's much worse than the version of this card that we have in our Northern Realms deck, unless it turns out that on average units are just way more powerful for Scoia'tael, and so Maybe in Northern Realms you're talking about, well, maybe you can bring back something in the 6, 7, or at most 8 range, but could be that for Scoia'tael it goes up to 10 or higher. Not sure if there's anything higher than 10. I think we've seen 10 with the Nilfgaardian deck that we had to face a bazillion times before we could beat it back in Vizima. But maybe Scoia'tael is something similar, where you have some high strength units, so being able to bring one back from your discard pile is actually a really big deal, more so than it would be for Northern Realms. We'll have to check it out when we ultimately have enough cards to play, it's quite a tell, but that time is not yet now. So, that's that. Um, I thought there was, there was a notice board here, but we did take from that. I don't think we've yet explored these buildings, though I'm not sure we can get in them, as we just saw. How may I assist you? Mm hmm you also play Quent? And I thought I remembered that there was a Master Armorer here in Crow's Perch. Thought that like, you might be the most skilled armorer in all of Velen. Looking for someone who can craft me some armor. Gotta be top quality. Well, I've been at it 20 years now. Mastered the craft in some respects, if I do say so myself. <laughs> You wish. <laughs> Don't listen to her. She's been sore lately, snorting every chance she gets. So, what kind of armor are we talking about? Light, but durable. Can't constrain movement, and I gotta be able to get in it without anybody's help. That all? Sure it shouldn't be self-cleaning. And <laughs> how about it wipe your arse after you take a shite in the bushes? Uh, I mean, are you saying that's an option? Comfortable Sounds like the answer is no. Light will do just fine. Ought to know one thing when it comes to armor. If it's got to be durable, it can't be light. It can. Just needs the proper tools to make it. Tools like the folk of Clan Tordoroch used on Undvik. Joanna, I told you time and again to stay silent when I talk to customers. Shouldn't pester folk with those nonsense Skellige legends of yours. <laughs> it ain't legend, and it ain't nonsense. My granddad would go to Unvik for his armor. Said Tordoroch folk made the best. Till last year, that is, when a giant ravaged their island. Inhabitants either ran off or died, but the forge should still be in one piece. Worth looking into. Say I find the tools. Will you craft the armor for me? <clears throat> On condition you bring the tools. But only then. Okay. But, uh, it's somewhere in Skellige, but we haven't exactly been there yet, so could you give us a map? These legends mention where the forge might be. Yes, north side of the isle, in a cave. Clan folk carved out a rock face to build it. All right. Look Close. for the tools next time I'm in Skellige. Take care now. Yeah, key phrase there being next time we're in Skellige. One of the barons, then, are you? Okay, and that is a new quest. I'm 
suspecting that based on our not yet in Skelga, that that is, yeah, likely a higher level quest. 24, yeah, it'll be a while. But we're in that territory. From both a phys physical and a level standpoint as well. Okay, uh, other than that, I was saying that I'm pretty sure our top priority would be do this. Forefather's Eve. Meet him at Fike Isle at midnight. We're actually not that far from Fike Isle. Is that true? We can go back to the crossroads for more things at the notice board there? I'm a little surprised. Fike Isle is... Okay, no, I take it back. It's a little bit of a ways from here. We do, however, have that fast travel location now. Why are there so many boats there? What? That wasn't the case before, was it? Is there really that many? Okay, so if we use this here, we should be able to teleport to that spot. I think. You can try to win them all, but you won't. And we could also see if people are still mad at us here. It seems like they've gotten over it now. I think we're good. Well, we should probably... I mean, we were talking about getting powerful gear from that guy, but I think, in truth, we, just as much as that, want to sell our armor to him. Because we've been waiting a long time to have a specialist of sorts. Both from a sword standpoint, I think mostly from a sword standpoint, but to a lesser extent, armor as well. So, can we actually sell... Uh, may I assist you? Oh, did we play you at Gwent? I don't think we did. We talked about potentially playing you at Gwent, but we didn't do that yet. Wouldn't mind a look at your stock. Might have good stuff as well. Some things that are too high a level for us, but that one is not. Not as good on some of the resistances, but in terms of raw armor, it is better. What if we just got a level one shirt? And we went with that instead. Yeah, lots of things that we're one level away from. That's interesting. 14 is apparently a significant cutoff. Okay. These are glyph recipes. Parchment? Jump? Huh? That's a weird one. More glyphs. Okay. Please do it yourself. Are these notable books? Care for your sword soldier book? I'm sure you guys will say, yeah, Lids, you should take that. Take the hint. Yeah. Uh, we, at some point, right around now, probably should repair some stuff. But you are an armorer. So let's first and foremost sell some things to you of the armor variety some things that are probably not great like this and this and this oh this is better than our current pair of gloves at least from an armor standpoint partially because it's a high level but also definitely in part because has higher durability at the moment. And these are close. Yeah, I think we were back and forth between whether the Assassin's Gauntlets or the Knight's Gauntlet were going to be better for us. This is definitely not good, though. And this is interesting. Lower armor, but all the same resistances and better. I don't know. I guess we sell it, though. And then I would very much like to have the opportunity to sell some of our weapons to someone. Ooh. We can now use this, because we're level 12. Actually, we should have been able to use that previously. I feel like we got that somewhat recently and may not have taken a look at it. But yeah, it's a high enough level, level 12, that that is actually... Likely our highest damage weapon in terms of pure damage. I did pick up some junk weapons like the Velen Longsword. I remember when I, 
I was looking at this, I was thinking, yeah, you know, we're going to want to sell that basically as soon as we get the opportunity to do so. It's worth only seven horns, at least it is when we're trying to sell to this guy. Would be worth more if we could sell to someone else. Is that worth the effort or should we just dump it here? I feel like we should probably just dump it here. Because otherwise it's just a, a prime candidate for getting uh, dropped later on. So these are basically the same. Jordan sign intensity and critical hit bonus. This one has Yurden and Axie intensity. Damage is almost identical. This one's actually a little bit better. There's the Velenax. I would probably prefer in that case. Yeah, and like I said, I, I think ideally we would sell this stuff to someone else. Let's pass on that for now. And I think let's do some Gwent. Because we did, of course. Yearning to play a few rounds. <laughs> Yearning to do. That ought to set me straight. We did do some Gwent previously, and that was a pretty successful round there. Might have been our strongest round yet, actually. So I think let's use the same deck as we used last time. No new Northern Realms cards. Oh, they've they're actually Scoia'tael. I suppose that makes sense since we are going against a dwarf. However, it does seem like there isn't always the clearest connection as to what faction someone is using and what their personal tie is. Like, we've had uh, people play monster decks, I think, on at least a couple of occasions they were human, so, you know, that's a little concerning if that's supposed to reflect that they are actually monsters themselves. <laughs> but as for our cards here, we have a couple of the people who get double strength when you have two of them. However, we don't have two of them. We would need two of these guys and we would need two of these guys. They don't work pairing them up with each other. So that's a little bit unfortunate. They are still fairly high base strength units, a little less so with the Blue Stripes Commando. But that probably means we don't re-roll them. I think we go with probably these guys, because again, I don't think we have much. Ah, well, we do have some in range. So come to think of it, let's keep you. Let's try re-rolling you. A little bit better. And then, do we have a lot of melee? Would we, we don't have a ton. I was wondering if, are we at risk of hurting ourselves more than our opponent if we were to go this route? Not sure. I feel like it is useful to have at least one weather effect in your hand so that you have that in your back pocket if you need it. But in that case, I'm not entirely sure if we would want to switch because these guys, they're one strength themselves. However, they boost everyone else in the siege row. We have four, except for themselves. We have four siege cards at the moment. So if we play every siege card in the same round, that means these guys are effectively four in terms of total strength. However, we also have the leader ability that doubles the siege row. In which case, they're much more than that. So for that reason, I think we might actually want to hold on to them. I think we keep this. So let's go. I think our opponent goes first. Is Scoia'tael? Is that what it, they were saying? Ruviel. Back from uh, Witcher 1, apparently. Only two power. That's a little surprising. Okay. So let's maybe just do a little bit more in the range row than you. Is that a, a random archer? Noblethana archer. Generic one. Has double the power of Teruviel. Sorry, Teruviel, but you are actually terrible. Confirmed. Okay, let's continue to load up on the range row. The reason for that being is if our opponent opts to use a nerf in hopes of making us weaker, they have to bring themselves down as well. Now they're going melee though we could use this ourselves or we could continue to do the trend here of following suit and i feel like that's not a bad idea 
Well, hmm. Oh, did we? When did we get this one? That was definitely not a card we wanted to keep because this is the Siege nerf. I think we swapped one of our cards and got this. So that's not going to be helpful this time around. Uh, hmm. But then that means we're probably either, since we want to play all the Siege units together, that means this turn we're either playing Zoltan here or we're playing the exact opposite, nerfing this melee row here. I think we do this. And then we hope our opponent passes. Because otherwise we are in a bit of a bind. Not. Uh, what just happened? What is that icon on that card? It, does it bring all those units from your deck to this row? Find any cards with the same name in your deck and play them instantly. That is precisely what happened. Fortunately, they also went into the melee row there, meaning that they also got nerfed. And look at this. At the moment, we have seven cards in our hand. For our opponents, five. So I think on this occasion, we are currently tied. So if our opponent wants to win this round, they have to play another card still. We'd have a humongous card advantage. So I think on this occasion, we deliberately pass. And that may mean that we take the loss here. But that should mean that unless our opponent plays a spy, that we're looking pretty solid for rounds two and three. That is a very strong unit though. That does not look good. So, hold on. Trying to look at this guy specifically. Adds plus one to all units in the row, excluding self. And you're also 10 strength. That is a crazy powerful card. So, I was really hoping this round we were going to be able to do basically just Zoltan and pass and let that be that. But I think we don't have much choice but to go Siege this time. Because if we don't, then we're not going to be able to top 10 strength. So that is very unfortunate. As for which units we want to play, that's also tough. Because mm, if we played one of these big ones and then used our hero ability to double it up to 12, that would be enough. That does, of course, take two turns to do. And in the meantime, our opponent might play a powerful card as well. So let's start with one of these and then see if our opponent passes here. They might. They did. Okay. So I think what we do is... Hmm. Actually, tell you what, I think we limit the siege row investment because we know that we have our hero ability and we want to save that and make it as powerful as possible by making sure that we have as many siege units to double as possible. So what we do here instead is we play Zoltan, that'll bring us to 11, so we just barely beat our opponent. And now we pass. So that way we did have to sacrifice one of our siege units, but we have still three is something. Oh, and we do, of course, draw another card. Melee, probably not the card or the row we would want to have here. But look here, we have six cards in our hand versus three for our opponents. That was the goal, was to have some really good card advantage here. Unfortunately, we have a couple of cards that are probably not going to be terribly helpful to us. Two other ones, not going to do a lot. Uh, oh, and I was going to say we might want it to have avoided the melee row because we were planning on potentially nerfing that but no that was the previous game we went not this time so we have no way of doing that this time so let's start with melee and we hope that our opponent has one or two bad cards in which case there might be very little way for them to eke out a win here but six strength is definitely good so let's start with the little ones one strength units and again, it's not going to have a huge impact because our opponent will, of course, be playing everything they have. Now, they can nerf the melee row, which is significant on this occasion. We could clear that effect, and in fact, we probably will want to. Let's wait a little bit longer to see if they're looking to play another weather effect here. If they have a siege unit nerf, then all the more reason. This is their last card, though, and it is just that. That is actually very good for us, so it turns out that 
this card proved to be very valuable because, well, we basically just deleted two of their turns in one of our own turns, so we already have the lead. And then, because we can, we'll throw that on there, and then we'll use our hero ability. Let's make it happen. So we doubled the siege row, and now we are in very good shape. We do not want to play this last card because that would nerf the siege, own, siege row, and that was the entire reason why we removed the weather effects previously. So, let's pass here and take the victory. There we have it. Let's take a quick look at what that card was, Forktail. Yeah, and I think that was red, because we fought a Forktail before in the actual game. And it was a monster, so I suspect that we will find it here. As for how good it is, five, it's something. It's a, you know, a solid card that makes it into your deck, it seems, on most occasions. So, brings us closer to being able to actually play monsters, because we also need more monster cards. Nice.